So this is a new band that I am going to be uh, covering. Uh, they've released three albums, uh, this band. This is the third album, so uh, at the moment of recording it, uh, this uh, video, this is the newest album that they have released. Now, I've heard one track from the first album, uh, so uh, I haven't really got much of an idea on that. But I have listened to the second album, and um, listened to it a fair few amount of times to really have an opinion on it. But obviously I'm not really going to spoil that until I do a review on that album, I'm just basically saying I kind of know what that album does and accomplishes, and what it's all about, uh, so I know um, how this album, The Uncovering, compares to that. So, um, I don't know where the band's uh, from, but I uh, do know that uh, the album before this, uh, they had two extra members. They had a keyboardist and they had a rhythm guitarist. So, in this album, The Uncovering, they don't actually have a keyboardist. The album does have keyboard elements, um, that is uh, true, but I'm guessing uh, the keyboards was either just they pulled some randomer in just to do them, or someone um, who is in the band at the minute um, knows something, or they've just pulled it off of a computer program or something. But uh, yeah, they lost uh, the keyboardist, and um, the keyboardist uh, definitely had a lot of talent, like he had a lot of actual leads. Well, he didn't have a lot, he had, uh, I think, there was two songs in the previous album which he did lead solos on, but they were really good and um, he definitely added a lot of uh, weight uh, to the album because you could definitely hear him and everything, so it definitely added just a lot more to them. And then the rhythm uh, guitarist, um, I think um, you could have the lead and then the rhythm doing its own bloody thing, so you had obviously the two different uh, guitar things going on. As for in this, you don't really get that. So they've lost two members but we still have the lead guitarist who does all the solos, we still have the singer who um, has a good voice, same drummer, same bassist. So what do they do seeing that they have lost um, two big parts of them? Well obviously they need to kind of try harder and show that the band hasn't changed, they're still capable and they can still you know do what they do. So, basically, diving in is your first go in, um, you get the first track, Evermore. Now, Evermore is uh, probably the heaviest track, I believe the band also kind of says it's the heaviest uh, track on the album. Um, it has female vocals, this band, so uh, female vocals. She uh, has a pretty um, warm kind of... Uh, voice it's powerful and everything but um it's around um her voice it has a roundness to it so it's not sharp and piercing so um it's warm and it's not exactly uh, bright and has a roundness to it but uh, she definitely has a lot of power uh, to it um she has a lot of range as well this uh, vocalist uh, so uh, even though she has that um round um warmer kind of tone to her she can um still belt things out, uh, she can still uh, hit some high notes, so uh, in the next track, uh, The Prisoner, um, she does hit some uh, high notes at times on a few words, but um, yeah, she has an incredible voice and she definitely has a lot of range, and um, in metal, just because it's not some kind of girly, piercy kind of voice, she has more of that kind of um, power voice with a bit of um, a roundness of bass to it, to obviously uh, project through instead of uh, being cutting, which um, I don't think a voice should really be cutting. There's another band I'm listening to where uh, the female singer has such a sharp voice that um, I don't really think it works. But yeah, other than that, um, the song takes a while to start, uh, Evermore is around five minutes or so, and uh, you can tell the guitarist has talent uh, before um, anything really kind of uh, happens. Um, song-wise, so before it really gets to the first verse. Um, you can tell he has some good riffs and everything. Um, there's a fair few changes until the actual first verse comes in. Um, the solo in the track, um, it has a fair bit of a build-up for it, so don't uh, worry about that uh, thinking. Um, it's quite repetitive because it is a lot of just kind of shred before 
and he actually gets to play in the solo. So, um, don't think that is it, and he's uh, just um, doing the one thing, is basically just to build up to the actual solo. And uh, the actual solo, he um, uses uh, whammy. It's not whammy pulls and wailing on the whammy, it's basically uh, fretting notes and everything, but um, he, um, while he's uh, hitting the notes, um, he's using um, it, um, the fingers that are uh, free, so he's picking. And then um, while he's picking, he does have hold of the whammy bar. So while he picks, he will push down or pull up maybe on the uh, whammy. So uh, all the notes have uh, this kind of whine to them. So he's not picking and then just pulling the living crap out of it or dive bombing or anything like that. He's picking and just uh, like just um, gently pushing down or gently lifting up on the uh, whammy just to uh, give it a bit of um, that kind of whiny feel to it. So, um, Solo is very good, but, um, compared to the second album, uh, Evermore is heavy and it does have, um, a fair few kind of change-ups. It doesn't really go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, and then end on chorus. It doesn't really do that. There are a few kind of different things, so, uh, the verse will kind of keep changing and then has different kind of parts to it, so it's not just one verse and that is it it has multiple parts to it and then you got like pre-chorus chorus and things then you got a melodic part uh, somewhere in that uh, second uh, verse the end of the track goes completely melodic there is a bit of a disconnect uh, with it which is a bit of a problem because even though the song is very heavy and then the end of the song it goes completely melodic I would say that is a good change of pace and I'm glad that's there because um, it adds a lot of variation to the song but the problem is, the song seems to end, and then if you're not really looking at um, where what track you're on, you'll just think, oh, it's the next track. Because there's about like a two or three second pause, and then something comes completely melodic. So you, you kind of think, well, this is another track. And even though I always know it's coming, I always fall for it. Um, my mind always jumps to next track, and then I... It doesn't take long, it's just a few seconds and it's just like, oh no, it is um, still the same track, but it's really weird to disconnect. So, um, yeah, there is a really good solo to it. There is a lot of uh, parts uh, to the song and um, it keeps uh, changing things up. Uh, the voice is absolutely amazing. But, um, yeah, compared to that second album, the second album was really heavy. I don't think this is as heavy as... Uh, the second album. The second album was really heavy. It had a lot of change-ups. It had multiple things with the guitarist, so it does seem that even though the guitarist is doing things and everything, it's not really going out there doing these kind of crazy things, which the second album kind of did. And again, you don't really get anything in the way of keys. I think you get, you know, keys here and there but in the uh, second album you obviously have a keyboarder so he's going to be playing throughout the entire song so so far with just this one track it just feels like just a more laid back simplified version of what uh, Divine Ascension really is we're getting on to the next track Prisoner now, Prisoner uh, changes it up uh, completely because uh, this uh, verse now is melodic. So it's not just like, well, it's a heavy track, heavy track, heavy track, heavy track. So it's like, well, that's good. We've had the heaviest track. Now we got in a track which, uh, when the verse comes in, it's melodic. So the intro isn't. Uh, the intro is uh, still heavy, but as the verse comes in, it's uh, melodic. And then halfway through that, um, it uh, starts building up, uh, the guitar uh, goes on to the uh, kind of uh, gain uh, dirty channel, uh, giving it uh, some bit more of an aggression. The pacing still going a bit kind of slow and everything, um, keeping things relaxed, but um, they obviously just um, up the gain. And um, the chorus in this, uh, the lead singer has some really kind of nice um, high uh, notes that she hits. And um, it shows a great range and everything, so um, when she hits the uh, high notes in uh, the chorus of Prisoner, it uh, works quite well for her. The second verse um, misses out that uh, melodic part, it just goes to the second part of uh, the first verse and just kind of carries on from there. 
The solo in this is actually a really good one because it's um, very, very, very slow. And that's the thing, I like it because it's just slow and just kind of trying to do something that sounds nice. Because if it doesn't sound nice, then it's just a really slow, dull um, solo. So he has to basically make each note kind of just leap out and just sing instead of just like this is just a show of talent so you kind of gobsmacked it's slow so you don't really get that you have to be hearing something that actually sounds really pleasing and that's what it does uh, the solo in uh, Prisoner it's so slow and it's really beautiful it's really well thought out and uh, well executed uh, has a lot of emotion so I really really like uh, the solo of uh, Prisoner but um yeah, again, uh, following the second album, um, Prisoner obviously um, changes uh, things up from Evermore, so obviously it's uh, a complete kind of change of tempo and pace and things. And uh, Prisoner still has a fair few layers to it, but compared to that second album, again, um, it still seems sort of stripped back. Uh, the Fallen, uh, the following track, uh, third track, uh, kind of follows in the same line of Prisoner, it uh, has a um, melody kind of aspect to it, but um, it kind of goes heavy again. And then the uh, chorus uh, doesn't, um, the singer doesn't use as high uh, notes as uh, she did with Prisoner. Um, solo again, absolutely fantastic, uh, there's still a few change-ups. Uh, the next track, Pursuit of Desire. Pursuit of Desire has a special guest, which is Thomas England, which is from uh, the band Evergrey. Now, I don't really like Evergrey. Um, I did have uh, one of their albums downloaded, and I have listened to it in its entirety. I've listened to uh, the newest album, which uh, seems to be pretty heavy for them. But um, there's just something about them I just can't really get into. I just find the voice is a bit whiny, and uh, their music is overall kind of whiny and uh, even though there is some catchy stuff and I know they all have talent I do know this I just it just doesn't really do it for me and uh, in pursuit of desire I, I just think that Thomas England and Evergrey it's all dull to me and that is pursuit of desire it's an extremely dull song there's a solo which I really like, there's a great solo, and uh, the actual vocalist of uh, Divine Ascension sounds phenomenal as per usual, but for some reason they decide that this needs to be more basic and even more stripped down. So it's got a really slow pace to it. Um, it's still uh, the game channel and everything, it's not melodic, it's just extremely slow. And when it comes to the chorus, um, it's a duet between uh, the female singer as well as Tom. And God, does Tom sound bad. Like, Tom seriously sounds like he's not trying in the chorus, because uh, she's using really powerful voice and uh, putting a lot of kind of emotion and feel into it. She's clearly trying really hard. And then Tom is just kind of in the background under her, just sounding like he's just muttering and doesn't give a damn. Like, he just sounds like he's not exactly in tune, and he's not actually singing. He just sounds really bad. And the song doesn't really uh, change at all. Um, it's just really uh, drawn-out uh, verses, really drawn-out choruses. And they're just kind of trying to extend the song as much as they can, so they just open everything up so much. But there's no quickening pace, there's no change of pace, it's just all monotonous, slow-paced crap. It, as I say, uh, there is a great solo, so there is that, and then the female singer has a great voice, so there are qualities to the song. And um, if you like Tom, fair enough, uh, but um, I just find it quite dull. No. Next track, New World. So, uh, New World brings it up a bit, seeing that uh, from the track Prisoner all the way down to Pursuit of Desire, we've had kind of melody and a bit more of a slow pacing compared to the track like Evermore. But uh, New World, uh, they kind of quicken the pace up a bit. And um, 
have again more layers to the tracks. So um, you have um, it going at a bit of a mid-tempo kind of first part of the riff and then it builds up to a very quickening um, pace and everything. It's got quite a good pace to it actually, the second part of the verse, uh, really good pace. You got a pre-chorus, then you got the chorus, which I keep saying New World over and over and over again, so it is very repetitive. But the way it's done with uh, the guitarist and her voice and everything um, has a fair bit of energy to it. So uh, you can't really say, well, if it's repetitive, it therefore sucks because Iron Maiden have a lot of repetitive chorus. Like take um, Brave New World, that is just a Brave New World in a Brave New World, a Brave New World in a Brave New World. And then he does that for really long and uh, doesn't do anything else so you can kind of say that um, I made on a Bruce Dickinson a crap and um, can't think of anything which you clearly can't it's basically it's just effective and it's something you can sing along to this isn't really a chant kind of sing along if you were to have it live uh, this track New World it just has energy to it where it is actually kind of still exciting uh, there's no solo in this track and now this is the problem there is 10 tracks to this album and if we have Evermore, Prisoner, The Fallen and Pursuit of Desire, that's four tracks out of ten. And I said New World doesn't have a solo. And the next track, Revolution Phase, doesn't have a solo. The next track, Beyond the Line, doesn't have a solo. The next track, One Step From Here, doesn't have a solo. The last track, doesn't have a solo, but the track before that, Bittersweet Divide, has a solo. So, if your maths is good and you've kept up, half of the album has solos, and the other half has no solos whatsoever. Now this is a problem, especially with Divine Ascension and the kind of genre it is, because it's one, heavy metal, two, it has power metal elements, and three, it has progressive elements to them. And then fourth, when you have heard the second album that has so many bloody things going on, each track is completely different, and then within the tracks there's a lot of things going on, then there's keyboard solos, and there's bloody guitar solos, maybe even more than bloody one in a track, and then you get this, where you get four tracks, then you have to go, god, how many? One, two, three, four. Four bloody tracks with nothing in the way of great leads or solos, just basically something Bullet could achieve, is not bloody acceptable. So that is bloody irritating, I don't know why the hell they've done that. They've lost the keyboardist who could do leads in the second album, and they've lost the rhythm guitarist, so what do they do with the, um, the uncovering? They still have the lead guitarist from that um, album, by the way, the second one. He's still here. They decide to cut out half the album of solos. And just make it bare bones. It's like, you you have less musicians now to do things. You need to basically, you should have thought, well, we need to fill the gap. You don't fill it by stripping the people who were there even further out of the band. What are you thinking? But again, as I say, New World, um, it has um, change-ups and everything. You have uh, the first part of the verse, the second part of the verse. You have a pre-chorus, a chorus, and um, it has high energy to it. Uh, there's great rhythms. The vocals are again great. There's range and everything. Uh, the bridge kind of section, um, this is the problem because you have sometimes when with a band that don't do solos, usually after the second chorus you have a new um, part with vocals or you have an unbelievably drawn out section of instruments not doing anything for about a minute. All they're doing is just dun 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 and it's just like, it's not a lead, it's not an interesting melody, it's just hitting chords for about a minute just so you can add length. And this is what this track does. There, after the second chorus, it's just a massive, massive drawn out nothing. And it's just like, 
You seriously didn't think to put a bloody solo in there? Because all you're doing is being excruciatingly fucking lazy just to basically hit a high-end minute mark. Because you think, well, we're metal and we need long songs, and also we only have ten bloody tracks, so we can't make the album short either. And then the last track is only two bloody minutes odd, and I'll get to that because there's even more to that track, which is pants. So, yeah, so New World, um, there's some great parts to it, but musically there's not a lot going on because you don't really have any interesting leads, you just have some great rhythm and great kind of melody and everything and um, great plays and great vocals. But then you've got a bridge that is so drawn out and does nothing that it's just boring, that whole section. And then there's no solo, so you're not really getting that either. So you're left really kind of emptied. And then Revolution Phase again kind of does the exact same thing. And then going through four tracks, wanting a solo and not getting them, it starts kind of waning on you and it starts really pulling you out, dragging you down and starts becoming kind of boring. Because you're not getting anything, you know, decent in the way of leads. Revolution Phase, as well as Beyond the Line and uh, One Step From Here, again, they all have amazing um, vocals. The vocalist is incredible. She has an absolutely outstanding voice. Her voice is really, really good. And, um, the music uh, through the songs are all very fine. Obviously, the first album, there was a lot more bloody going on in keys and everything, so this is a lot more basic. But it's still musical enough and it's still enjoyful. And uh, you can still tell uh, while they're playing, even just in uh, verses and choruses, you can tell uh, that they have talent just with the rhythms that they come up with. You can tell that they have an ear for uh, melody and things. So, um, all of that is fine. It's just the fact that you're not actually getting solos and you're not getting um, anything interesting after uh, some of these bridges. Sometimes you get some parts which uh, adds just something new or sometimes you just get a massively drawn out nothing. And it's especially weird when the second album there was so much going on and now here there is nothing and it's a metal album with power metal elements and progressive elements. And they are stripping it so bare bone that it is like rock songs just with the metal kind of essence in there. And it's just like, what are you doing? Bittersweet Divide, so uh, the um, second to last track, brings the solo back. And again, it's a phenomenal solo. This guitarist really actually is amazing. He's really good. So you hit this solo and then you, because it's here and then you hear how bloody great it is, it's like finally it's here, but then it irritates you because you just realize you are so bloody good. What the hell? Why weren't you in all the previous tracks? And it's annoying. The last track, Vultures. Now this, as I said, is 2 minutes, 40, something around that, and yeah, no solo, again, and I can barely count this as a bloody song. It's the lead singer, and I don't know if the band's really there, if it's kind of uh, just kind of sound effects or something, but it just sounds like an outro. And that's it, because nothing happens. It's just a really long, how it starts is kind of how it is in the middle, and then that's kind of how it is at the end, and that goes on for two bloody minutes. So for what this song is actually doing, two minutes feels really excruciatingly long, because it's a drawn out bugger all of nothing. I don't know what the hell happened. The second album is so bloody good that it could be rated a 9 from me, there is so much going on. And this is completely crap, and it's only the album following that. It hasn't been years and they've lost their edge. It's maybe just, we've made this album, let's go into the next one, and they've just completely sheared off a cliff and seem to have lost their minds. 
I have no idea what they were even thinking. Because sometimes I can kind of figure out why they may have done something. But with this, it's just like, they've lost two members, so obviously they're going to struggle because of that. Because they don't have two guitarists. You can only have one guitarist doing something. And for the most part, he does fine. But it is still limited because there is a guitarist missing. So even though he's good, it's not going to basically change the fact there is one missing. You can't change facts. And the keyboardist is gone. Now even though they do put key stuff in, like in one step from here there is an at uh, their bridge, they actually fill it full of bloody keys, making it come across as some kind of melody of keys, which is like, well one, it's not a solo, and two, you don't even have a bloody keyboardist, so I don't even know who the hell to compliment on it, and I'm guessing it's probably from a computer as well. So that completely drags me out, and doesn't give any credit to it. So, yeah, you got Pursuit of Desire, which was very, very dull, but it did have a solo. And then we've got Vultures, which is not even a bloody song. And if you get the Japanese version, um, you get 11 tracks. So the 11th uh, bonus track for the Japanese version of the album is an actual song that seems to actually have some kind of like techno elements, like it's completely different sounding to the rest of the album. And guess what? It has a fucking solo! Why the hell make that the bloody bonus of the Japanese version? I can't get that. I live in the UK. People in America can't get it. People all over the world can't get that track unless you're in Japan, China, wherever. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it has a solo. And it sounds nothing like the rest of the album. And it lasts somewhere around five bloody minutes. That bonus track that you've cut off from the majority of the planet is better than five tracks on the actual album. You've gone from your album being really, really stupid and thick to making yourselves even thicker with the Japanese version. You would think, God, how could they make it any worse? It's just like, oh, Jesus, bloody Christ, they've made it even worse. What are this band thinking? You lost a rhythm guitarist. That should not have made you drop solo, seeing that you're the lead guitarist. And you're still here. If the lead guitarist were to left, I would be like, oh Christ. And I can understand why they're not there, because the guy is not there. But the guy is here, and he's dropped the solos. It's like, while he's playing in the band, he's like, ditching and walking backwards out the door. He's there in the studio, playing along, and then it comes to him doing a solo, and he's like, nope and scarpers. It's like, you're in the bloody album, you can't just ditch it now. The lead singer is as good as she was in the first album. The lead singer is just as good as she always has been. Um, great, she's not, you know, doing stuff where she's not trying. She actually is. I can see her really being passionate and caring. And um, drum and bass, they're all fine. And then the guitarist, for HALF the bloody album, you're great, and you're trying. And then for half the album, you're a moron. You're a complete idiot. So, I just, I, I don't get it. If this was me, and I were to have a band, and I were to lose my rhythm guitarist, as well as um, a, a keyboardist, who is a really good keyboardist and did two solos on the previous album, I would be really conscious of the fact that I'm only going to have one bloody um, guitar through this whole thing. So I would try to make it more interesting and fill the sound. And I would do, you know, I would keep doing solos. I, I don't see, think why the hell I would consider not. Like, you know what this album needs, less solos, I think we're onto something. Who the hell thinks like that? So stupid. And then with the key thing, I would hire a new keyboardist. 
I wouldn't have gone into the bloody studio and just whacked something out. Like, how do you pull it off live? Get another keyboard so you can do it. This is... It's so stupid. And then the Japanese version. Why did you not put that track in? If you put that in and took the vultures out, then you would have six tracks with solos and only four with nothing. We have to go through four bloody tracks with no solos. And again, the way the songs are therefore positioned is really bad. I'd have them completely spaced out, so I don't have to go through an ordeal of having no solos. So the song layout is bloody crap. They've completely locked the majority of the planet out of having a song with a solo and is really good. And they put on Vultures, which is pretty much not a song that should just be deleted. Which basically, if you do that and consider it's actually not a bloody song, then technically there is more solos on the album than none. But you've just basically shortened the album. So, oh, Jesus Christ. So, rating this album, it would be... Jesus Christ. It w Even though I've been hating a lot, I would give it like a 7.5. Now, because I've hated and just called them out to be such morons, you're probably thinking, well, why 7.5? Why that high? And it's basically just because half the album does have phenomenal solos. They are really damn good. The guitarist is really, really great. Also, the vocalist is really, really good. She's really, really amazing. So, for half the album you get fantastic solos, and then for the whole album you get amazing vocals. And then also, um, the songs do keep progressing, there are changes in different parts, not to the extent of the second album, there was loads going on in there, and um, you know, more musicians, so uh, there was even more layers um, in that regard. So, um, but nevertheless, um, half the album, great solos, fantastic vocals, and then songs that do keep changing it up and then uh, changing from each song and everything with uh, different tempos, different vibes, uh, different emotions and different pacing and all sorts of stuff. Um, it, it's, it is basic, uh, the changes. Like, it's not you know something really vast where the songs are constantly shifting and doing massive things. It's just like, oh, this is um, a new part and uh, oh, this is different from the first verse a little or maybe it isn't so some songs are basically the basic formula and then other songs uh, there is a bit and then some songs there is a, a fair few stuff so it's not massively advanced like the second album and then the tracks of fight the solos again i did say um the uh rhythms and everything and melody of the band along with the vocalist and the great vocalist and then some high energy and uh, then there's some uh, kind of uh, low musical parts uh, one song uh, sounds very kind of fairy tale and uh, kind of pretty which um is nice compared to you know just that one kind of track out of all the rest just to uh, you know give everything new flavors and things so that is basically the reason for the 7.5. Um, it's, it's I gave uh, Days of Jupiter um, a 7.5 as well, but um, obviously um, that doesn't mean they're both exactly the same. Because uh, Days of Jupiter got a 7.5 because of uh, what that band was achieving for who they are so that's why they got that score now this band gets a 7.5 because of who they are and that brings them down so days of jupiter got 7.5 which was going up for them because of what band they are and this band gets a 7.5 because of what they are which brings them down but they still hold that 7.5 because as i say um, half the album does have incredible solos, the entire album has amazing uh, vocals, 
and then um, all the tracks are good, beside Vultures, which is a piece of crap, as well as their Pursuit of Desire, which I can listen to Pursuit of Desire, it's just um, it's, uh, the dullest of the album. But um, Vultures, I can get to that and it depends what mood I'm in, I'll just shut the fucking thing off. But um, yeah, uh, the ones with fight solos, uh, One Step From Here is a really fun song. Uh, New World has some great energy, that second part of uh, the uh, verse, I really like uh, the play with it and uh, the tempo. Uh, Revolution Phase, I really enjoy that. Um, it takes a while for that chorus to actually kick in, so uh, you get a verse and then like a new verse and then it gets like a chorus or something. It, it's a weird kind of positioning of uh, how they've uh, structured that song, but uh, because of it, it obviously kind of makes it quite cool. Uh, Beyond the Line, still a great track. Um, and uh, Evermore, heavy track, um, I think there is a guitar lead uh, before uh, they actually hit um, the chorus, I think that uh, goes uh, at the same pace as Revolution Phase, so you, when the singer comes in you get uh, your verse and then you get um, a bit of lead and then you get the verse again and then you get uh, finally to uh, the uh, chorus. And then Prisoner um, going from a heavy track down to a melodic uh, kind of uh, track and then it builds up a bit. And then um, the chorus has some really kind of high notes uh, showing the versatility and everything of uh, the female vocalist and then the fall and again kind of follows in the line of Prisoner but um, I think has just a bit more of a lift to it. Um, so it is a good album and it is fun. Like I do in, um, like listening to it first half of the album is really good, apart from Pursuit of Desire, and then the second half, um, the tracks are really fun, but it does start becoming a bit of a drag because of them lack of solos, but that is basically it. If they had a solo, then it would be really, really good, so that's the only thing really holding it back, and then Vultures just absolutely sucks. But it still, again, hurt because of uh, that second album. But I am kind of scoring it for what this album is and what it's doing. There is a bit um, coming from uh, the second album, but if I was to completely put it in with that second album, then this album would go really far down. And I just don't think that would be kind of right for me to do because uh, what this album does deliver. I think if I were to go down and give it like a free because of uh, what they've done compared to the uh, second album I just think well there is a lot of great solos and there's a great vocalist so why the hell would I do, would you do that so that's why 7.5 again so uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much it um, it is a good album compared to the second one it's uh, a bit more laid back um, if you're not um, that mass into solos and everything but you don't mind them then this album will be uh, completely fine, but um, yeah, when you have something uh, as big and incredible as that second album they did, um, it makes the uncovering an album you don't really go to that often because you would just rather listen to The Liberator, which is the uh, name of the second album. But um, it's nice to come back from time to time, but it's not really going to be the album you really go to for this band. It is going to be The Liberator. Uh, for most definite, I don't think anyone would disagree on that. But um, from reviews I've seen of other people, people say this is basically a mature album and they've seriously mastered the songwriting ability, which I think is utter bollocks. So these uh, trained professionals saying that they've mastered their uh, musical writing because they've took out a bloody keyboardist, a rhythm guitarist and then stripped out the guitars and this is now why they are much better um, songwriters and uh, do better structure because they basically took their stuff and ripped it down. <sighs> the bloody obvious even people can't get it. But yeah, it's a 7.5. It's it is excruciatingly disappointing when you hear the Liberator and then hear this. But if you just kind of view it for what it is, it is fine. Which makes it 7.5, which is basically, it's good. It's not great, but it is a rather good album. With some really good parts 
and then some not so good parts, but they're all right. And then the uh, like odd track, which is really crap. So yeah, 7.5. Um, I think uh, I would um, suggest you uh, checking it out because uh, it is uh, a good album. But uh, I would suggest uh, if it's not really doing it and you want more, just go to uh, the Liberator. You will be fine. <laughs> If it's just like, I like it, but they don't do enough, just go to the Liberator and just be like, no question about it, you will basically be fine. Because, Jesus, there is a lot going on. So, that will be it from me. Um, I am going to review the Liberator, but I can't download it, because usually to get tracks I need to uh, download it from a place you're not supposed to, um, but I can't find one, so if I review that album there may be no music at all, unless I can figure something out. But uh, that may be the next review, or maybe um, a different band, which will be um, a band called Arwen. So uh, if you want to look that up um, ahead of uh, my review whenever I get to that, then you can, Arwen, it's their most uh, latest album, so if you want to do that, uh, you uh, may. Um, I'm not obviously going to stop you, am I? So, um, until then, uh, I'll see you later. Bye, guys.